Right, welcome back to another video. So, we've got this shaft to sort out today, or this roller. As you can see, the shaft has snapped off the end. So it's it's been a bit of a farmer-made roller, I think, as this. And it's been made with limited equipment. Um, and it's I think it's a shaft that goes all the way through, 25 mil shaft. But then, because it's been welded round here, it's not the welds made it brittle, and that's why it snapped. And on the other end of the roller, you can see the weld is starting to crack as well. That one is cracked. Can't see as well now, I've already brushed it off, but you can see before it's cracked. So I'll renew both ends, I think. Now what I was thinking was to make a stub shaft to go in the end with a plate there and a plate there, and then just a short shaft. And then the same at the other end, but I think because it's the roller's not very long, it's only 950 mil long. I think it'd be more cost effective for me just to make one plate at one end and one plate at the other, and then have a shaft that goes all the way through like it is now, but use a bigger diameter shaft. Use like a 35 mil shaft that's machined down to 25 mil. So then it's where it's welded around the shaft, it's welded around a bigger diameter. So the first job, I'll cut this end out. I'll probably cut around there with a the gas. Same at the other end, get the shaft out and then gently cut around this, cut that out as neat and best I can and leave the inside, inside diameter of the tube as neat as possible. So that is the shaft out. I just crudely cut round and I just cut a bigger circle out to get that end out. Um, yeah, one end's bigger than the other, so I cut a bigger circle out so it'll come out easier. So I need to get this end out now. I'm not sure whether I should gouge the weld out or just blow it away with the gas. I think I'll blow this end out with the gas and see what it's like. And then I might do the other end with a gouger, see, see how I get on. So I've been round there, I think I'm not quite found the separation line like I was hoping to do, or even some places. And there I have. Um so I'll do the other end with the gouger, I'll gouge the welds away. And then I'll come back to this end when it's cooled down a bit. I think it'd be quite difficult though, because it's it's a real thin walled tube, so I'll have to be careful that I don't dig into the wall of the tube rather than the weld.
So that was a lot easier with a gouger. You can see I've, I've gouged it all the way around. I've just knocked it in a little bit. I'll, I'll cut it in half now and then it should come out with two halves. And I'll just have the weld to clean up. Um, and I think I'll turn it over again and maybe gouge the last bit of the weld out the other side. Right, so that's both ends out now. There's just um, bits of weld to clean up. And I feel like I made that a bigger job than it needed to be. If I'd have just gone round with a gouger to start with, the air out gouger, maybe it'd have been an easy job. But... So sometimes with jobs, it's tricky knowing which is the best tool to use to do, to do, yeah, to do the job. But I had the gas torch fired up already, so that's why, I, you know, that's why I did the first one with the gas. So they're all ground round and cleaned up now. Uh, I've burnt through two places. I've filled them back up with weld because it's a real thin wall. Anyway, I'll, now I'm going to plasma some circles out to fit inside there. So that's two of them plasmed out now, so we'll put them in the lathe, turn them down, make them fit in there, and then bore all through the middle.
So I've got that drilled through. I'm just going to run the boring bar through just to make sure it's true before I put the reamer through. So I've got them plates machined up now, just I haven't chamfered them or anything, just quickly uh, turn them down, bar them out, give them a skim off. I might want to chamfer on them to make them fit better in there because it might be a bit tight. Anyway, I'll do that when I get to it, so I'll cut the shaft now to replace that one. So I've got the shaft in the lathe, I've got the, I've drilled a centre in it and I've got the centre in that end to hold it steady. So now I need to turn down 205mm down to 25mm diameter. So that's that end turned down to replace that bit. So I'll have a keyway to machine into it as well. So I can take that out now, turn it round, and then machine the other end down. So that's that shaft done, both ends of the machine down now. So what I need to do is cut this keyway into the end of it. So I'm going to use a uh, edge finder, find the centre of this slot, and then I'll just sit the new shaft into the slot like that. And then it's 8mm, 8mm width is that, so I'll do that. So that's the keyway cutting the shaft now, so everything's done, we can start putting it together.
So I've got them plates in and the shaft in. I've just got it sat on a bit of angle line there. And then I've got it sat on there. And with a dial gauge in the middle. Got about 0 0.25 of a millimetre run out. So it's be half of that because of the plus and minus. So yeah, I think that'll be near enough. We'll tack them ends in now and then we'll weld them round. So before I weld this round, I'm just going to give it a preheat. Just going to preheat this plate and the shaft a little bit. So that's it finished, it's welded in now. That's one end. And that's the other end. So that's should be better better now. Done away with that weak spot on the original one. So I could have made the job a lot easier for myself and just just chopped them welds off, knock this old shaft and put a new shaft back through again, but then you still got the same weak spot, so yeah, I always prefer to over it over engineer a job than under engineer it so yeah that's that job done right so thanks for watching everyone um just quickly before you go i'll just show you these and see what you think so i've had these made for me to wear while i'm making my videos but i'm not 100 percent happy with them well they don't look too bad i think them logos are too big and that needs to be bigger and then i was expecting these to be a darker gray so I think it'd be a bit of black maybe. And then I've got Polo with my logo on the front and then the hoodie's got the logo on the front as well. So yeah, let me know what you think.